Yesterday I did a video focusing on 11 men's fragrances that to me are totally unisex. So I wanted to do the women's version of that video, but it's a little more challenging for me to find feminine targeted fragrances that are unisex or masculine. But in the end, today I'm speaking about 11 unisex fragrances that I think are the manliest uh, out of the unisex fragrances that I have. So if you want to find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, today I'm talking about 11 unisex targeted releases. Most of these are niche. There's a few designers, um, but um, the majority of them are probably more niche styling anyway, even from the designers. And I find them to be ultra masculine for unisex targeted. Now, once again, I'll say I don't have an issue wearing fra fragrances that are targeted to women and, uh, you know, obviously masculine. Because I, I, it's funny because when I look at myself and my likes, I like a lot of ultra masculine fragrances, but I also have no problem wearing the more feminine ones featuring tuberose and things like that. So for me, it's definitely not a challenge. I can wear anything that I like, but some of you might have a little issue, but uh, these videos can be, uh, f uh, you know, reference for you guys to, you know, look up and see what uh, smells masculine versus feminine, all that good stuff. But before I let you know about the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And also, before I move forward, I just wanted to uh, bring up a, a little topic about a loss in the fragrance community. A few of you guys were mentioning that I didn't bring it up, but you know, I do my videos um, weeks in advance. So I decided to do this video because I did not do this video uh, prior. But uh, Carlos uh, Powell of Brook Brooklyn Fragrance Lover uh, passed away a couple of days ago. And even though he and I were not close, uh, I did get to meet him a couple of times and he seemed like he was a nice guy. But uh, I think he was pretty much loved a lot in the community. So I wanted to just uh, mention that and um, let you guys know. And also, I, like I said, even though we weren't close, I definitely did a donation for his GoFundMe. And if you guys are, are interested, uh, you should definitely uh, do the GoFundMe for him as well. So moving on, we're going to start off with uh, the first fragrance. And I'm actually including two fragrances in this particular line from one designer. And I'm going with Tom Ford's Ombre Leather or Tuscan Leather. And I find it to be ultra masculine for uh, fragrances for men or women. Um, they're unisex fragrances, obviously, but they lean very, very masculine for me. Um, I think some of the notes, which I'm going to do a separate video going forward to discuss what are the more masculine notes versus feminine notes, but I'll mention it here. For me, leather, I find to be very, very masculine as a note for fragrances. So if you don't like leather and you're a woman, don't worry because they do tend to be very, very masculine for me. Whereas also the opposite side of that is something like tuberose, I find men, uh, I've noticed men find tuberose or white flowers in general to be very, very feminine. So with this uh, or Tuscan leather, it's mostly about the leather, uh, some suede leather in addition to the leather. And then there's also some fruity touches and ambery woody touches in the, the base as well. So you do pick up some fruity touches, but here I find the fruitiness a little more. And even though the, the, the fragrances kind of remind me of one another, both Tuscan leather and ombre leather, uh, Tuscan leather is from the private blend collection. Ombre leather is from the signature lineup of fragrances from Tom Ford. This one, I think to me, is a little easier to wear, probably a little more unisex leaning than Tuscan leather. Because I always felt like Tuscan leather is very industrial, like it has a very manufacturing plant kind of a smell uh, with lots of leather, you know? But I actually, actually really love ombre leather. It's a great scent, definitely leans masculine. So Tom Ford's Tuscan leather or ombre leather is definitely one uh, fragrance targeted unisex that's uh, overly masculine for me. So this next one is from the house of Diptyque. This is Eau de Minte. And I was surprised about this one because I've always wanted to find great mint fragrances. Before I got to smell this one, I thought, you know, what are they going to do with this? When I read Fougere, uh, and then I was like, okay, it's a Fougere with mint and also geranium. Uh, when I smelled it, it immediately reminded me of uh, something like Drakkar Noir. 
Um, and I think that is the reason why I've heard a lot of women say that this is just way too masculine for them. It reminds them of their grandfather or father who is wearing fragrances like this. And I can totally see that because I do get the similarities. They're not identical, uh, but uh, they're definitely reminiscent of one another. So Diptyque's Eau de Minte features mint, geranium, nutmeg, patchouli, and rose. It's a uh, a long line of great, great green fragrances from Diptyque. A very, very underrated uh, house, I personally think, in the fragrance community. I think uh, most people talk about, you know, the, the usual suspects, but Diptyque as a niche house is very underrated, but they do a lot of great, great fragrances, and it's like lots of these uh, green fragrances that came up. The Vetiver fragrance, uh, I forgot the name of that one, very green. Uh, Odeminte, Tempo, O Capital, all very green fragrances going in different directions. But if you are a woman and you like, uh, you know, fougere style fragrances, let me know if you like Odeminte. Also, let me know if you like other fougere fragrances, because one of the uh, qu comments yesterday came in was about fougeres, and uh, I've noticed in general throughout um, the years, women say that they don't like this particular style of uh, fragrance. But let me know if you're a fan and you're a lady. Uh, I'd like to find out. But either way, Eau de Minte from Diptyque, definitely a very masculine, manly fragrance from, uh, uh, the, you know, the niche world that's targeted unisex. This next one is a fragrance from the house of Nishane. It's Hachivat. Um, so for me, this one leans masculine, ultra masculine, uh, and uh, something about it that screams, uh, you know, just a manly fragrance, you know, something about the fragrance. When I'm comparing it to something like Aventus, I find that Aventus can be a little more uh, unisex, whereas here, it's so kind of abrasive, it's so, you know, like, powerful, uh, that also has a lot to do with the concentration of the fragrance because it's intense, but just everything about the fragrance, it's a fresh intensity. So it leans masculine for me rather than uh, feminine, and it, it goes manly. So I know a few women that wear this. Uh, they don't have issues with wearing manly fragrances versus uh, feminine fragrances, but uh, for me, I really recommend this one as a really, really intense, fresh fragrance, but it features oak moss, pineapple, grape fruit, patchouli, and cedar. A great, great, I don't want to say the word alternative to Aventus. It hints at it, but it's not identical. I feel like the oak moss in here is so amped up. And then also the whole batch variation thing with Aventus. People say it's smoky, not smoky, fruity, not fruity. There's just one kind here, you know? It's just the one thing, and I like what it, what it, what they've given us here. It's not an ultra fruity. It's also not smoky, but just a really, really strong and, and intense, uh, kind of a um, fresh fruity Shipra. Anyway, this is Nishane Hachivat, a great, great uh, unisex fragrance that's ultra masculine. The next one I'm gonna to talk to you about is uh, Tower Perfumes Lone Star Memories, this one right here. So Lone Star Memories is a very, very masculine leather fragrance, ultra masculine and very, very animalic. And I think in this video, you'll see a trend of two notes that I think are very masculine for me, leather, Vetiver. Those two notes are very, very masculine, and if you're a woman and you love these notes, then I think you appreciate lots of different kinds of perfumery and you know notes and things like that. But I do see occasionally, an, uh, you know, comments come up uh, and uh, from women saying they can't tolerate vetiver, they can't tolerate fougeres, obviously, and also they can't tolerate uh, leather. But this one is overwhelming and intense. Um, it's interesting. When I first started wearing this fragrance, it reminded me of the fresh interior of a new car. The the uh, fabric leather slash the word pleather came to mind. I don't know why. So it's a leather and plastic together kind of a thing. But over the years, this has gotten really, really animalic for me. I don't know if it's my nose has changed or what, but I'm picking up a lot more animalic notes at one time I did not used to. So it is overwhelming. It's an overwhelming experience. It could be a little naughty, you know, there's, you know, the little bit of a dirty, uh, you know, animalic touches in here, so it could be put a little bit put uh, off-putting. But as a woman, let me know if you like this fragrance. As a man, let me know if you like this fragrance. But either way, this has lots of leather, myrrh, labdanum, clary sage, so in the end, it's leather with lots of resins and 
amber and of course a little bit of um, aromatic touches from uh, green clary sage so that is tower perfumes lone star memories okay the next one i'm going to talk to you about today is private label from Javoy. this is like a very very butch unisex fragrance overly masculine and you know in the end it features vetiver patchouli papyrus labdanum birchwood sandalwood i have uh, you know had women uh smell this fragrance and their reaction has been um, positive because they like the visual that they think about with this fragrance they think of a like a a dark library in a you know big house uh, and uh, you know whiskey and cig cigars being smoking and things like that with like you know the old oldness of the house you can smell uh, or a library or something you're in drinking uh, booze because it has boozy touches and I think that's coming from the vetiver but in the end it's it's an overdose of lots of vetiver with patchouli and papyrus but it definitely goes ambery it definitely goes smoky and sandalwoody it's a great great creation and an absolutely a very very masculine creation and it's it's a little goes a long way with this one too so that's private label from the house of Jaboy let me know if you're a fan of that one now I was going to put something like incident diploma which is also vetiver and patchouli. I felt that was a little more unisex than this one. This one's really, really butch, as I said. Speaking of vetiver, this is Chanel Sycamore. It's a very, very masculine fragrance for a unisex targeted uh, fragrance from the Chanel Less Exclusives collection. And also, in comparison to everything else in this collection, they tend to be very unisex, if not um, uh, feminine-leaning fragrances in the Less Exclusives collection. Um, also, I was thinking of either this one or boy from less exclusives collection from chanel i felt boy was a little more unisex even though it's a fougere in comparison to this so vetiver definitely hands down is a very masculine note this one has smoky vetiver lots of cedar some vanilla there is some aromatic touches of herbs in there but it's a beautiful uh you know vetiver fragrance that uh i think it's a, a great masculine offering from the chanel collection of fragrances if you like vetiver i, I rec recommend this one and uh it's interesting. I have some friends, woman friends, that love vetiver, and um, they tend to love something like this. They they wear things like this. Um, they were obsessed with things like this. They love Dior's vetiver as well. They like things like Lalique Encre Noir, um, a few other Guerlain's vetiver, of course. But w once I had them smell this, they hadn't even heard about it because they were used to the regular of uh, uh, fragrances from Chanel. They never knew that they had less exclusives, and they just went gaga over this one. So women do like this one uh, I just think it's a very masculine offering so that's Chanel Sycamore a great offering from Chanel less exclusive that's totally masculine and manly now this fragrance I'm going to talk to you about next is not very well known and I was trying to include a you know variety of fragrances in this list that people do know about but this one might be not so uh, recognizable this is a fragrance from a house called juice box and it's green bubble man it's if you smell this one uh, you're gonna say it smells totally totally uh, masculine it's a very very masculine dark offering but the focus here is cannabis it's about marijuana but you have this cannabis note which I'm assuming is coming from an accord with the uh, amber there's some wormwood sandalwood cedar saffron honey patchouli labdanum and grapefruit but in the end it has a very oily kind of a, a structure or composition when you're wearing and you, you experience the oiliness almost like petroleum oil so there is that kind of a quality under there greasy is the word that i would say with this one but very green obviously it's a green it's called green bubble uh it's the bubble you're you know you're breathing out when you're smoking cannabis but wow it's a totally different kind of a fragrance it's a great experience as far as a cannabis fragrance goes great experience as far as a you know green fragrance goes but totally has a very dirty vibe but not animalic as in dirt dirty more like a green oily greasy earthy kind of a dirty but a unique take on a fragrance but very very masculine for a unisex fragrance so that's green bubble from the house of juice box let me know if you guys know that fragrance next fragrance we're going to talk to you about is dior's purple oud and the reason i'm putting this one here is because it has 
oud. It has a little bit of a vet vetiver quality, even though I don't think they credit the vetiver. And for me, it reminds me of Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Homme with uh, Lalique Ange Noir. Both masculine fragrances, both manly fragrances, I think. But here, I think the only thing that's really brightening up things in here is the orange note. But other than that, it's spicy, it's woody, it's oody, and vetiver, even though they don't mention it, as I said, but a great scent. Um, it's not totally original, but I, I, I do like this one. I like it for what it is, and I like that it reminds me of these two fragrances. It's almost like meshing those two fragrances and coming up with a fragrance. Maybe you can layer the two fragrances, I don't know, but that's what this kind of reminds me of. This is Dior's Purple Oud. I find it to be very, very uh, masculine for a unisex fragrance. Man manly for sure. Um, and then the next one I'm going to talk to you about is Frederick Malle's Rose and Queer. Um, once again, uh, to me, it's a very green rose, and then of course the rose is not a rosy kind of rose, it's more of a geranium rose, and they've created an accord with the note of geranium, because geranium does go, not only does it go rosy, it goes minty as well, so you have a kind of a fusion of both here, it's rosy, minty, kind of a geranium with lots of leather um, notes in here, so there's geranium, leather, vetiver, Sichuan pepper, black currants, so light fruity touches in there, but woody, aromatic, spicy and green. Um, for me, it also reminds me of a very spicy uh, rose stems kind of a smell, but it, I think it's very masculine. I find it to be very masculine, and that's why I feel like it's a manly fragrance in, in contrast to some of their other fragrances which lean uh, feminine. So that's Frederick Malle's Rose and Queer. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. This next one is a powerhouse that came out in the 2010s, and powerhouses are are fragrances I remember from the 70s, 80s, and maybe maybe early 90s. They don't make fragrances like that anymore, but this one definitely is. This is from the house of Atelier Orange, and this is Rien Intense Incense. This, oh my god, it's overwhelming. It's very, very masculine, it's very animalic, with lots of incense and lots of leather. Basically, that's what it's uh, known about. There's also oak moss here, labdanum, ambery, and uh, leathery, and also aldehydes. So everything in here is dark. They're dark notes. With this aldehydes thrown in, it's kind of a clash, but for me, the aldehydes gives it this lift and gives it a little more wearability, whereas it doesn't kind of sink, you know? It's not this uh, deep, dark, rich notes that's kind of like lopsided in the, you know, the notes breakdown. So that that Alde, uh, aldehyde's note is fizzy and bright and uh, uplifting and it contrasts nicely with the dark notes in this fragrance but very very manly so so manly and animalic as well this is an animalic fragrance you've got to love animalic fragrances you've got to love leather obviously so check out Rien intense incense very very manly fragrance that's unisex targeted but definitely uh, manly or masculine leaning. And I'm going to end the video with this particular fragrance from the house of Guerlain. It's Bois Mysterio. So this one for me, uh, it was a love at first sniff, but it's a, it's a, um, a continuation of a former fragrance from the house of Guerlain and I'm having a hard time saying the name. If you guys know it, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So they added it into this collection and I th think I like like it more in this collection in comparison to that one. I don't know why because I have a bottle of the original I, I was gifted recently and they both smell the same. But very very masculine woody aromatic fragrance overwhelming with leather too. There's leather in here. It's resinous, it's leathery, it's aromatic. Uh, so myrrh, leather, cedar, cumin. Gotta watch out for the cumin. If you don't like cumin don't go for this one. Baylor Laurel adds a great great quality to this fragrance. Patchouli, Neroli, and Jasmine. What a winner of a fragrance. This is absolutely love it and I can't get enough of it. Now the last two fragrances, this one and the last one, I do have reviews on the channel if you want to go find out more about them. But if you like the idea of this fragrance, definitely go check it out. Um, this is Bois Mysterio from Guerlain, uh, a great, great fragrance that I find to be very, very masculine for a unisex fragrance. Anyway guys, those are my uh, 11 uh, fragrances that are unisex targeted that are manly. Uh, let me know what you think about these fragrances. Have you tried these fragrances? Are you a fan of them? Also, let me know what your favorite unisex fragrances are that lean ultra-masculine or manly. Put some comments down so I can find out. This is what I was able to find in my collection. I'm sure there's more, but I felt like these definitely are some of the manliest fragrances that I have that are unisex targeted. Anyway, guys, I appreciate you tuning in today. Please, uh, if you have any questions or comments, list below. Otherwise, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.